a campaign creation process is where all the magic happens. It's where you get to express the value of your offer to go ahead and convert them. But we want to add a lot of extra powerful attributes to help you drive more revenue. And I'm going to show that to you in this power packed experience. So let's start off over here. We've got the overall campaign creation experience. And let's firstly just start off saying um, new campaign, right? So I've just named this campaign over here. Now to, to start off over here, what I'm going to do is I've already uploaded leads. So please watch that other video to show you how you can upload leads and add variables and map the fields and so on and so forth. I'm going to just start off with saying, hi, first name, All right? Uh, let's work together. Now, the way I got that is simply by typing the, the quote brackets, the curly brackets two times, and you'll see all the dropdown options that show up there. Now, what I'm going to do is just say, uh, I'll tell you exactly what I'm saying. I say, hey, hi, hello, and I'll do first name. Or to just give you an example, I'm going to click on the plus icon and do first name. Instead, uh, and not only that, I'm going to say, not only that, I'm going to click on the insert variables and you'll actually see I have SL time off day, uh, which will pretty much go ahead and tell them good morning. As simple as that. Right. So what I've done is this part over here is called spin taxing. And there's an article we've written about that. You can go check it out. What spin taxing does is creates a sense of variability within your copy. The premise over here is to create as much variable copy as possible because remember, emails are not meant to be sent in bulk. Emails are meant to be sent custom for another person. So adding variability really, really helps. So what this is going to do is every single lead in a modulus of one, two, three, person is going to say, hey, Hey, Vibhav, good morning. The second one's going to say, hi, Vibhav, good morning. The third one's going to be, well, no, it won't be Vibhav. It'll be individual leads and their first names, right? Now, SL time of day is a nice little personal touch that we've got over here to show you that you can, it, it's a naturally sent message and it's actually going to be dynamic to the time of when the email is sent for that lead in their time zone. So super, super advanced and handled for you automatically. And if you want to see the other options, if you just click on the plus, you can actually see we have a bunch of other things. We can say day of week, we can say time of day as well as the capitalize. So I can say good afternoon uh, on this fine and then I'll say day of week. So automatically, right, without even you doing any fancy work, or anything extra, you've got a very personalized first email saying, hey, Vibhav, good afternoon on this fine Tuesday, right? And when I'm looking at that, I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, you probably just sent that a few minutes ago. I can write the rest of my copy over here, again, with spin tax, uh, but I'm just not for the sake of this conversation. Just say, hey, let's work together. Together, I think I can add a lot of value. Please do not judge me on this because I'm not putting my creative hat on. Now, there's two things over here to consider, right? You can go ahead and add your signature um, naturally. If you connected a mailbox and that mailbox has the signature, check out the mailbox videos over there. Then you don't need to worry about it. You can simply just go ahead and let this be. But in a situation, some people want to go ahead and do PS lines because it is a natural known fact that PS lines are always, always, always read almost 93% of the time. So I, want to, I, I might want to say PS um, will give you Something that's like a, a hook deal. We'll give you 5% off, I don't know, some of that, right? So to make it natural, because you want the customer to feel like you've not added unsubscribe at the bottom, or sorry, your signature at the very bottom, and then you've added the PS to the ones. You want to make it feel very natural. So the way you can do that is simply just by putting in signature like that. So now what that does is usually we would have taken the signature and put it at the very bottom of the message, which sort of defeats the purpose of PS, because PS is meant to be after everything. So this way, you can actually make it look very, very normal, and actually natural, like how you'd probably send messages. And this way, you can say signature, it'll inject the signature there, and then it'll put the PS line. So it looks like you've actually just written this yourself. Now that we've spoken about that, let's go ahead and speak about something called fallbacks. Um, let's just say you don't have a first name, right? And sometimes your CSV doesn't have data, doesn't have variables, et cetera, et cetera. Not an issue. Firstly, I want to show you how you can actually handle that over here. But you want to click on Help Center and you want to go ahead and search for, let's give this a quick second, fallback. And when we search for fallback, we'll have a nice little article that shows up that tells you exactly how you can go ahead and fall back. Because in the situation, the first name's not there. You want to just leave it with maybe the last name or hey there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this just for the sake of conversation. By the way, we can do a whole bunch of cool things, a whole bunch of cool things, such as if they've got well, higher than five Google reviews, you want to do greater than less than signs, you can do a whole bunch of operators to really, really help this be extremely powerful 
extremely personalized. And uh, let's just say you have personas in the CSV you've uploaded, right? And you're targeting certain people. Each lead has a certain type of persona. One of them is a gym owner. One of them is a cafe owner. You don't want to sell the same set of personalizations. Maybe the first one, if it's a gym owner, you want to talk about something to it. Hey, I hope you got any reps in today, right? But if they, if their persona is, is maybe a cafe owner, you will probably want to start with, Hey, how's your coffee serving and your roasting uh, of your coffee today, right? So that those layers of personalization that really, really, really make the difference of that particular person, like that, that next level you take when you're trying to reach out to the customer can be very, very simply and dynamically handled within Smartly without you having to do much than lift one or two fingers. So I'll show you how to do that over here. So I've gone ahead and basically put in a piece of copy saying, if the first name exists, then please say, hey, first name. Else just going to say, hey, th hey there, right? Let me do that. Right? Now here's the other cool part. You don't want to just do, hey, right? You can actually put spin tax into this. So I'm going to copy this piece and put spin tax here and I'll put spin tax here and I'll say, Hey there. Um, and then after that, we'll put a comma, right? And we'll put good morning. So now I've dynamically converted this entire normal message I've had into something a lot more powerful where I've said, if the first name exists, I'll say, Hey, first name, uh, good afternoon, good evening, et cetera. If first name does not exist, I'll say, hi there. Good afternoon um, on this fine Tuesday. So you've now gone from the possibility of having dirty data or missing data to then handling a situation where you have that condition and automatically adjusting for it. Super, super simple. Now, you may not want to go ahead and create the same copy again and again and again. And no worries, you click on the star and we've actually got some predefined templates and these are some obviously exact um, new templates that I've created. Now, if you wanna go ahead and create your own new template, don't worry, just click on this right now. And once you've done that, just click on new template. Uh, let's just call this uh, test for demo. All right, save. And once you've created that template, you can just go ahead and uh, either update it, edit it, et cetera. But just to mention to you very quickly, if I go to anything over here, I click on this, all of this is edited, uh, editable, right? I can do whatever I want over here. Obviously, please don't do that. And you can just click on create new template. And then that will take the copy you've got there and create a new template out of it, just like how I did in the past, right? So this one. In this case, I didn't make any edits. I just created a new template and then you can go ahead and update it. Now, here's the cool part. You can actually go ahead and uh, put in the, the variables that you want uh, over here. So it will actually fill it up. Now, you just need to be a little careful because let's just say you're using this template and, and you've uploaded a CSU where there is no first name, then you want to make sure that it's actually handled. In this case, I'm assuming that I've got the variable niche or niche. But in a situation I didn't upload niche or niche in the CSV, then this is going to be blank. So you just want to be a little careful with respect to the templates you created, but it is absolutely dynamic for you. You do not need to worry. Cool. If you just click on select this template, then your copy will be updated accordingly as well. All right. So I'm just going back. Now, let's just quickly talk about uploading images because if you want to go ahead and upload images, you can most certainly do that. Now, we personally don't recommend adding images in the first email simply because of deliverability. But if you want to do that, just click on that, drag and drop the image, and it will be working just fine over here for you. Or you can go ahead and post in the URL of a self-hosted image that will also show up. Now, here's the other thing that you want to sort of look into as well, which is let's just say you want to perhaps personalize image URLs that you have uploaded from a CSC. No worries at all. So what we can actually go ahead and do over here is um, click on this little three dots and go on the code view. And within the code view, you actually want to go ahead and add an image tag, right? Uh, maybe I'll just go something like this. I'd say image and then... I'll say SRC, and then within the SRC is actually where I'm going to put in maybe the variable within their CSV was called image URL, as an example, right? And in this situation, now the image a URL will be dynamically pulled in from the CSV and dumped in straight over here in the code view. I'll close that up. It will be broken because obviously we don't have um, an image URL as a variable within the CSV, but if we did, this would automatically show up over here. And again, you got a dynamic injection of the image URL directly from the CSC without having to do any sort of hubbubs that you might want to worry about. Cool. Now let's talk about two other very important things. With Smarty, you can add over 26 different variants um, when you're creating a your copy. Variants are extremely important because variants will give you the option to actually test what offer, what subject line, what personalization, what different types of content and copies actually working to convert. And like I said, you've got 26 different versions. Now, based upon when you actually watch this video as well, you'll have another layer of uh, extreme power to add it on. And what that power added on is it will actually let you go ahead and decide what amount of... Um, 
distribution you want to give each variant. Maybe variant A gets 5%, variant B gets 20%, variant C gets 30%. Not only that, can you do it manually, but Smart Feed will automatically find the best performing variant and put a lot of energy into that completely automated. You don't need to do anything. Smart Feed will be intelligent with its AI filters, just like how Facebook and other tools, the large tools do it. We will have our own distribution algorithm that will go ahead and optimize for the best performing campaign that you decide. So that will also be done. Cool. Now let's just say you got ahead and I'm just going to remove that for now. Right. And now that I've selected email over here as my follow-up step, if I leave this subject line blank, it will look like a very natural conversation where sometimes you just reply back to the lead saying, Hey, did you see my message? Um, I'll just say, Hey, and guess what? You have one extra cool, cool little personalization option that shows up. If you click on the plus icon over here, whoops, maybe I'll do that. Uh, you can actually see the last touch date. So I'll just say, Hey, first name. Um, I reached out to you last touch date. And that's really cool. Cause what I'll say is I reached out to you two days ago, one day ago, five days ago, completely dynamically without you having to do anything. And that will become just automatically handled for you. So it look like a very natural conversation. Again, super, super cool ways for you to improve that deliverability, stand out in the mailbox and convert more leads. And if I leave this empty, it will show up as a thread to the previous message. If I don't leave this empty and I type in something else, hi there, then it will be sent as a completely new message um, for your particular lead. So just keep that in mind as well. So you can add as many steps as you want to go ahead and send out messages. Um, usually we recommend five. Some people do eight, some people do 10, even more, and you can decide for the number of days. Now, if you want to go ahead and send it, uh, send messages within the same day, which we really, really, really do not recommend, but if you want to, for whatever reason, you can simply just go with the decimal amount. So 0.1 is going to represent 2.4 hours subjectively. And the other cool part, you can add variants even for your follow-up. So then you can do a whole layer of testing on variant to variant and variant B to variant C. Now, so let's just say I have two variants over here and I have two variants over here. Your question might be, what might, is A going to get A and B going to get B? Absolutely right. A will get A and B will get B. But what will change is if I add variant C over here, in this case, there's a difference in modularity. So A will get A, B will get B, then A will also get C. So you can see it cycles through it in a modulus way. So there you go. That's all the options we have there. And there's actually a lot more that I have not walked you through directly. For example, if you click on ABC over here, we actually walk you through the copy. We tell you how many adverbs you got, your spam keywords, if it's doing performantly well, if it's not doing well, and so on and so forth. You've got a spam checker as well that helps you ensure that you ignore triggering words within uh, your copy that might lift a particular spam filter to pick you up and take your message and put it somewhere else in the spam folder, obviously. So you want to use these powerful options over here to help you optimize your copy to make it very, very easy to read, but also extremely powerful, ensuring that it actually lands in the primary inbox as often as possible. Um, so, okay, from here, we're going to go ahead and take this on and say, save a next step. So you can go on to the next step over here. So hopefully this helped you out. Um, if you want to check out the setup video, that's another video that we recorded after this, check it out. Make sure that you watch the whole thing because it's going to show you how to get the maximum out of your campaign. And then we'll also go through the final review and make those final touches that you might want to, again, get that deal closed. Have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching so far, and I'll see you soon.